The velocity of a car accelerating from a stoplight is shown in the graph below. Use the graph to determine an estimate of the distance traveled during the first 30 seconds of driving. Use three midpoint approximating rectangles to get the most accurate approximation possible. Let's first mark off the interval from 0 to 30 seconds. Because we're asked to use three approximating rectangles, we now divide this interval into three equal subintervals. 30 divided by 3 is 10. Each subinterval has a width of 10 seconds, here and here. And now we're asked to form three midpoint approximating rectangles, which means we use the function value in the middle of each subinterval as the height of each midpoint rectangle. So for example, for the first subinterval, the midpoint is when the time is five seconds. At five seconds, we go up to the function to determine the height of the first rectangle. This point here indicates the height of the first midpoint rectangle. Let's go ahead and sketch it. The midpoint in the next subinterval is when the time is 15 seconds. At 15 seconds, we go up to the function, which determines the height of the second midpoint rectangle, which is here. And then we find the midpoint in the last subinterval, which is when the time is 25 seconds, and we go up to the function to determine the height of the third midpoint rectangle, which is here. Let's go ahead and shade the area of the three rectangles. The area of these three rectangles represents the estimate for the distance traveled during the first 30 seconds. Notice how we have the velocity along the vertical axis and time along the horizontal axis. And velocity or rate times time is equal to distance. But we do have a problem here. Notice how the velocity is in kilometers per hour, and along the horizontal axis we have the time in seconds. So before we find the area, we do have to have common units of time, which means to find the width of each subinterval in hours, not seconds, we'll have to convert 10 seconds to hours. Notice each subinterval has a width of 10 seconds. So again, we want to know 10 seconds is equal to what fraction of an hour? To do the conversion, we'll write 10 seconds as a fraction with a denominator of one, and then we'll convert seconds to minutes by multiplying by the unit fraction one minute over 60 seconds. Notice seconds simplify out. Then we'll convert minutes to hours by multiplying by the unit fraction one hour divided by 60 minutes. But notice minutes simplify out. Multiplying, we have 10 divided by 3,600 hours, which simplifies to one divided by 360 hours. So each of these subintervals has a width of one divided by 360 hours. And now to approximate the distance, we'll determine the area of the three rectangles. So the distance traveled during the first 30 seconds is approximately equal to, again, the area of the three rectangles, where again, the width must be expressed as one divided by 360 hours, and therefore the area of the first rectangle is going to be one divided by 360 for the width, and the height we have to approximate, let's say the height is approximately 12. So the area of the first rectangle is one divided by 360 times the height of approximately 12. Now because all the widths are one divided by 360, We'll just multiply the width by the sum of the heights. So plus, the area of the second rectangle is the width of one divided by 360 times the height, which again we have to approximate. This would be 75, so let's say 82. Notice if we distribute, we do have the width times the height. And then for the third rectangle, we have the width of one divided by 360 times the height, which we can see is 150. And now we simplify. We have one divided by 360 times the sum in the parentheses, which is 244. Multiplying, we have 244 divided by 360, which simplifies to 61 ninetieths, which is a decimal approximation, is 0 0.6778. And because the velocity is in kilometers per hour and the time is in hours, this distance is in kilometers. 
So again, the estimate for the distance traveled during the first 30 seconds is 61 90ths of a kilometer, or approximately 0 0.6778 kilometers. So the trickiest part about this problem is making sure that we do have common units. In this case, our time must be in hours in order to get an estimate for the distance traveled. I hope you found this helpful.